in a fair in our neighborhood the other day. The lady said it was huge. What? We had a bear over in our neighborhood the other day. The lady said it was huge. And it ended up down in Hendersonville a day and a half later. The bear. Is that the one that was in the paper? Yeah. The three bears? Yeah, with the three. Mom with the, lady, the cubs. The lady said it was huge, but the other guy says, oh, no, it was just the ordinary size one. <laughs> talk about the mill village at the next stop so right now I just want to focus on the school okay for somewhere between 1907 and 1910 Joseph Oscar Bell and his wife formed a school at the site of what used to be Camp Windy Wood down near Lake Summit way down there in 19 uh, later on they built a school here 1923 is when the school board bought this land from Joseph Oscar Bell. This was a school and all the other little small one-room schools in the communities closed. And between 1924 and 1929, all the little schools closed and all the kids were coming here. It was a graded school, so it served first through grade through high school for the entire Zirconia, Tuxedo, and Green River communities. In 1929, the school burnt burnt to the ground. The Henderson County School Board contracted with Earl Stillwell, the famous architect, to build a new school. This is a Stillwell school. This school was built around 1930 and it was designed by Earl Stillwell. In 1935, Flat Rock High School opened and they moved all the high school students out of here to Flat Rock High School. So it was only first through uh, eighth grades. In 1960, East Henderson High School was built and they turned Flat Rock High School into a junior high school. So all the students from the community then, high school goes to East Henderson High. The junior high kids went to Flat Rock Junior High. In the 1970s, they built, after Flat Rock Junior High burnt, they built a Flat Rock Middle School, and so the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders were going to the Flat Rock Middle School. So this was only kindergarten through 5th grade from 1970 until the school board closed it in 1994 and started sending all the elementary school students all the way from the South Carolina line and the top of Mount Pinnacle on buses that they have to get on at 4.30 and 5 a.m. in the mornings to Hillendale and upward elementary schools. So there is no longer a school in either Zirconia, Tuxedo, or Green River communities. In 2000, well they opened this as an ex, the first extended day school for some of our problem high school kids and junior middle school kids. And then about 2004, they moved the extended day school over to Balfour, where it is today, and they did not use this school any longer. In 2005, they declared it surplus property. The people in the community were outraged. They wanted to preserve it. Preservation North Carolina came in and said it definitely can be a, uh, on the historic landmark, a national historic landmark, not only for its age, but also because Steelwell designed it. Preservation North Carolina was willing to work with the community to preserve the school, but they couldn't get anyone to buy it to meet the school board had to put it up for bid and nobody was going to pay what the school board was asking for it, and it turned into a huge mess. The community was in an uproar. We wrote several front page stories on it. The commissioners called numerous meetings. The school board called numerous meetings. Finally, Shane Shipman, a son of Cliff Shipman, who many of you may know, Cliff Shipman, who owns quite a bit of property in Hendersonville and owner of the Chariot and all, he, uh, his son bought it. Then his son later uh, signed that over to Cliff. Cliff died and his heirs have it, his wife and Tommy, his son. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with the property. Right now, the Henderson County Sheriff's Department's training dogs on the property. The community still wants to use it as a community center, but they have to have an investor that's willing to preserve it, meet Preservation North Carolina historic guidelines, get it in shape, and so far nobody's willing to put that kind of money into it. So I don't know 
what is going to happen to this property. The, uh, I also want to say that Duke Power does own Lake Summit. Uh, I already talked about that. And John A. Law, who was a co-founder of Blue Ridge Power and Light and later one of the owners of Duke Power Company, began building summer homes in the 1930s and 1940s all around the lake because the Duke Power Company owned the land that borders the lake on both sides. So they were uh, building summer homes there. Bob's uncle, my granddaddy, was the builder of some of those homes around the summer homes around Lake Summit. There are summer camps around that lake. One is Mondamon, started by Frank Bell Sr. He started that one in 1922. Greystone, started by Joseph Sevier, a Presbyterian minister. He was also president of Fassifern School. He started Greystone in 1922, and his family still owns that. Jim Miller is married to one of his descendants. Green Cove was started in 1945 in Brevard, actually, by the Bell family, and it moved to Lake Summit about 1949. That was also Frank Bell Sr. And Windy Wood, which is on the other side of the lake, was 1957 by the Wagner family, and it closed in 1986. The Vagabond players originally had the Playhouse on Lake Summit from 1948 to 1952. And in 1952, they renamed it uh, the Vagabond School of Drama and moved up to Flat Rock. Where were they then? Uh, if you're driving in front of Old 25, it's before you get to the lake, kind of where Windy Wood was. I mean, kind of on the left there before you'd actually get to the lake. It was on that side of the lake. Back up there is that four-lane US 25 connector. That's where the ball fields were. This area was famous for its industrial league baseball teams back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. These guys were winning the championships consistently all over the place. Baseball was a huge deal down here. And boys who became the owner of Green River Manufacturing built those fields. The four lane took their ball fields. So they didn't even have any ball fields left down here. And when I was doing those stories for the Times News, the residents were really complaining about no park and no ball fields. And we're going to discuss that later in just a few minutes. And um, it's a very short drive to the next stop. We're just going to go up a little piece and turn right where the old community store used to be, the Heart of Tuxedo. There's a little store there if you need to go to the bathroom or get anything before we head on up the mountain. was across the street in that empty lot. In 1907, Joseph Oscar Bell began Green River Manufacturing Company on that empty lot, and he began building a mill village. It was Cotton Mill, Cotton Cloth is what he was named. He named the community Tuxedo. Now the story of that is that he originally wanted to name his mill village Lakewood, and it was Lakewood from 1908 to 1910. He built a small lake for water for the mill, but it was not Lake Summit. So don't let people confuse you on that. But this post office department informed him that there was another post office in the state of North Carolina named Lakewood, and he could not use that name. So they came up with a name Tuxedo. It is means nothing. <laughs> Some people say that his wife came up with that name because of a tuxedo park in New York that she had been to or something. But other people say it means bear in Indian. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> and if you go on the website and read about the story I did on tuxedo community, the Cherokee word for bear is nothing like tuxedo. <laughs> so if it is an Indian word, it is not Cherokee, and I do not know what Indian language it would be. The post office, he opened a tuxedo post office, and that's where it was, where it says tuxedo salon. That was the original post office. 
That post office in 1991 moved to Green Six Oaks Mall, which the local folks call Roscoe's, and it closed in 2006. Now in 1933, Robert Boyce became president of Green River Mills, and Joseph Oscar Rill stepped down. And he's who began building all those ball fields back up in here I was telling you about. And there's a monument to Boyce somewhere down in here somewhere. They had a monument to him. Uh, he sold the mill to the J.P. Stevens and Company, and in 1988 they sold to a recycling plant, and I've got all that history on the website of the different plants that bought it, and the last one closed about 2006 or 7. It stood vacant for quite a while. They have now tore down the mill, and the community is in the process of raising money with the cooperation of the Henderson County Board of Commissioners to build a community park over there where the mill used to be. So you're gonna see a big sign over there telling about that. There's mill houses on both sides of the road. Uh, this was a mill house. You can drive all the way up Mountain View. That used to be Mountain View Road. You see a lot of old mill houses. The typical mill house was not this fancy one I saw on Facebook yesterday. <laughs> the typical mill house was much smaller. You've seen mill villages and mill houses. Now some of them had nicer homes of two-story, but those were not the homes that Bell built for the workers. Those were much smaller mill houses and they were scattered all back in here and all up in here. So all Tuxedo was was the mill village. Um, Tuxedo First Baptist Church down there, it was built on land owned by Joseph Bell and the Mill Village. He gave them the land for the church in 1910. Uh, the church has been rebuilt several times since. There's another church up Mountain View Road, kind of on that hill back in the woods. Uh, it's on top of a hill. It overlooks Lake Summit from up there. That's Mountain View Missionary Baptist Church. It was organized in 1945, 1947, something like that. So all these are Mill Village people. There's two cemeteries up there in those woods, but they're 20th century cemeteries used by those two churches. So there's not of any historical significance. All land has been bought from Bell everywhere in here. There is a World War II monument right there listing the guys from World War II from this community. Uh, on the Bell property back in there near the camps, Frank Bell Sr. is buried, small grave site. And up Bell Mountain Road, if you go turn to the first road to the right next to Lake Summit, go on up, you'll hit Bell Mountain Road, which will take you all the way over into Heatherly Heights and Mountain Page. Up that road, there's an, in a pasture is Reverend Henry Patton's grave. He was here in the late 1800s. So that's all the cemeteries there are in this Tuxedo area. And if anybody needs to use the facilities, you can see if the store will let you use them there and we'll wait and then we're going to head up. Oh, as we head up toward Mount Olivet, you're going to pass Green River Fire Department on your right, their main building. Now, Jenny, on the mill.